Wait a minute. While we're definitely getting into some housework today, this is absolutely a vlog. So, vlog intro. Hey guys, you're watching my real life vlogs. Welcome back, welcome back. And it's a weekday. And somebody's gotta get ready for school soon, right? Mm -hmm. Come here, come here Afro Puffs. Come here Afro Puffs. Look mommy. Look mommy, say hi. Look, say hi. Look. Look Ian, say hi. Hi guys. Hi. Oh. <laughs> it's early in the morning. I'm about to start getting Ann ready for school. Anthony is in the shower in there. And speaking of in there, we're going to be doing some projects in the bathroom today. All right, we're going to be getting into some shelf mounting. We're going to be getting into some operation increase surface space, increase storage opportunities today. I have the itch and I have to do it. So he's going to be heading out to work soon. I ran the project by him first kind of conceptually and he's with it but I don't think he knows how cool it's gonna truly be once everything is in so I'm really excited so once I drop her off we're gonna head to Home Depot and get everything we need for this project it seems pretty simple enough we're just mounting some floating shelves and I've definitely done this before down in my laundry room easiest stuff ever the only difference is that I kind of want to work with clear glass which poses a little bit more of a challenge just because of the material itself i have to be really careful not to break it i actually have a slight fear about that so i hope i don't break the shelves but other than that it seems pretty straightforward and simple so we're gonna get into that today also today you guys i want to tackle these um window trimmings right because when we got the windows replaced we got nice beautiful new like white um, premium windows but our trim is still i think original to the house if i'm not mistaken and I don't want to replace the trim, honestly, like it's fine. The trim that we have on here currently is really pretty much the same stuff that they still have in the stores right now. So I really don't see um, the benefit of replacing it. It's not in bad shape or anything, but we just need to touch up the paint because there are some areas where the paint is chipped, some areas where there was never white paint because the windows before had like that kind of brown um, kind of oak look to it. So I just want to fill in those areas so it doesn't look so yeah. old. <laughs> so I'm going to be refreshing that today as well. Are you flying, Mommy? Are you flying away? Fly away, fly yeah. away. Yeah. Are you flying away? We have to get you in the bath, little girl. We got to get in the bath, hon. We got to get in the bath, Annie Boo. Hey, what are you doing? What are you doing? Okay, I'm back from Home Depot. It was a very successful trip. I got everything that I needed for a great price. You guys know I'm usually in Menards, but today was a Home Depot day because they had the decorative shelving that I wanted. So let me show you guys the idea that I have and kind of where this came about. Okay, so this is my master bathroom. You guys are familiar if you've watched my channel for any amount of time. So the tub is kind of floating right in the center here, which is so beautiful and, and lovely when you look at it, but functionality wise, it's kind of lacking, right? So in this bathroom, 
we don't have a whole lot of surface space. All we should pretty much have is just this little ledge here on either of the vanity counters, which isn't a lot of space. And if you're in the tub and you need to sit your bubble bath or bath salts or drink or phone anywhere, all you really have is like this little ledge here. And it's actually kind of slanted. And I'm going to tell you, I have dropped my phone in the tub before because I thought it was sturdy on here and it slid right in. So I've destroyed some electronics, all right, fooling around with this tub ledge. So it's not really a good idea. Now I could always put like a little table on the side or something like that, but I honestly just feel like that's just another thing to trip over. So I don't wanna do that. So I decided that maybe we need to install some shelving right here um, that can be used for decorative items, but also have some functionality for bath time. You can easily sit something there if you need it um, for your bath, like bubble bath or anything like that. So I decided to go with glass shelving, which is what you guys saw me picking out today because it matches with the shower. So I think it's a really nice look. I was trying to decide whether I should do one or two shelves on this wall right here. I tried to think about what that would look like and I was just kind of struggling with whether I should do one or two. Over here, this is my toilet kind of area, right? There is absolutely no storage over here whatsoever. So I kind of was toying you know for a little while about how i would go about it and i just decided the two glass shelves here so that i can have somewhere to put stuff and it doesn't have to all just sit on top of the toilet and i kind of wanted shallow shelves i didn't want it to come out too far okay so this is how i'm gonna kind of test whether or not i need more shelving oh let's see Okay, I did another deep analysis and having the actual shelves in the space to kind of see them and kind of mock them up on the wall, I can kind of see exactly what I need. So I've determined that the area over here, because we have so much space there, I think we actually need three shelves on this wall and then I'm gonna go with two shelves on that wall for some balance, you know? Because I feel like one shelf would just look like a fluke. It'll just look like kind of, what's that? You definitely need to if you're going to do the floating and they need to be stacked. So that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to swing back to Home Depot and get more supplies. It just literally never fails. Whenever I do like these little home projects, I can never just go to the home improvement store one time. It's got to be multiple trips. All right, back from Home Depot, got everything I needed. Um, I also have an idea, right? Remember I told you guys that I often will model my house after like vacation experiences, right? So like if I'm in a nice hotel, I like pick up little things that I think are good to incorporate into like my bedroom or bathroom. When we were in the Jamaica Villa, um, I had showed you guys that they had some robes kind of hanging on the wall on hangers. And I thought that was a really nice touch like super smart way to like hang up your bathrobe. So I was thinking about putting a couple hooks somewhere in here where we can hang up our bathrobes that I haven't actually gotten yet, but I'll buy some nice ones if I can hang them up and display them really nicely in the bathroom. So I'm thinking about doing that. So I've gotten those two hooks. All right, so there's probably a stud somewhere in the middle here. And then the rest of this is just like hollow drywall. I'm going to use the screw sockets that I always use. I'll show them to you guys. Here they are. They're called drywall anchors actually. They go into the wall and pop open on the other side to give you that stability. And these ones hold up to 79 pounds per anchor. The bracket kit actually comes with its own drywall anchors, but from experience, I know that these ones are really, really bad and they don't really work well and they do a lot of spinning in the wall and stuff. So I will probably forego these and use my own. I'm just gonna measure the wall from the ceiling to the top of the toilet. It's about 37 inches. That's just going to give me an idea of how much space I'm working with in terms of spacing out the shelves because I want them to be all spaced exactly the same, of course. So I'm probably gonna space them 10 inches apart, starting with 10 inches above the toilet seat. Got my pen, I'm just gonna mark that off. Now 
Now with that, I'll still be able to have room to put stuff on top of the toilet if I want. And then each of the shelves will have a good enough space in between. But the very top shelf will be the one that I won't be able to fit very tall things on. So this top shelf will, you know, because the ceiling starts here, because it is slanted, the top shelf will not be able to hold or house um, things that have a little bit more height to them, which is fine because I'll have these two middle ones. But what I don't want to do is start the shelves too low to the toilet because that's going to look very odd, I think. I'd rather sacrifice the height at the top than to sacrifice the height down here because it's going to look really weird for shelves to start like right above the toilet. We need a little bit more space. Plus, you know, you might need to get inside your toilet and you don't want to be bumping up against your shelves trying to get it open or having to remove the shelf just to get it open. So you definitely want to have that clearance. I think 10 inches is 10 inches is fair. So let's start there. And over here by this window, I kind of want to start the shelves kind of right where the tub height would be on the wall. So I want to start the first shelf like right here and then the second shelf um, 10 inches above it or something around there. And uh, let me see how tall is this to Just about two feet. So that would mean the first shelf would be starting right here. And then if I go 10 inches up, the second shelf would be right about right there. So boom, boom which gives us yeah, just about 10 inches of height to meet this window um, trim right here. And even if things are taller, it doesn't matter. That top shelf is infinite. All right, let's go ahead and level and draw out the markings for where the shelves are going to be positioned. So I make markings which um, coordinate with the two points right here on this octagon window and I have leveled off the markings so that they are level enough, right? I still have to go back and make sure, but this just gives me a point in which to start my measurements. So I'm placing the shelf up here just to kind of see where I would want the shelf brackets, like how far over do I want them to be? And I think having them right here is okay. You guys, I'm obsessed with symmetry. Everything has to be precisely symmetrical. So this is gonna be rough, but let's see if we can do it. <laughs> Here's the shelf mount. Very, very simple technology here. Just going to mount it to the wall by driving your screw right through here. And then you'll adjust this top part in order to clamp down on the glass shelf itself and just use this little screw at the bottom to tighten it. Real simple stuff. And it's got a really cute polished chrome finish too. Okay, I got them both in. Now for the moment of truth. <laughs> to see how all of this is going to play out. I'm just gonna remove the plastic on this. Very beautiful. I mean, and it just matches perfectly with the shower glass. Like it's the same type of look. It's got that green stuff on there. So yeah, so let's see. I'm gonna have to wash this with some Windex or something. So it's gonna go right there. I'm just gonna quickly do a quick level check because these can swivel. Um, either way, depending on if you loosen them, you can swing them. So this will be the time now to adjust it if it's not level. Never mind. I think I'm the level queen. Trying to make sure they're even. Okay, she up there. She is up there. Okay, here's how it's looking so far, you guys. Look at that 
Look at that, that looks really good. And that's just the one shelf. Then we'll have the other one right, right below it. It'll have that stacked look and I'll be able to put things there. And let me just show you guys what it's looking like as you kind of pan over to the shower. Like it all just makes sense. Like, oh, okay, it's lots of glass in here, we get it. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish the others and then I'll show you guys the final look. This is how it looks now. Y'all, I'm just staging it. This is not how it's gonna be. Um, I haven't even cleaned the glass yet or any of the mess that I made down here, but I'm just trying to see like if this is going to work, you know? And so far, I think it will, you guys. Like it's definitely giving spa vibes, like, like big time. So I'll probably for sure display some of my bath salts here and I'll probably likely put a candle and then why not put some face towels here or hand towels, whatever, why not? And then in this thing, which I think I really love, this is so cute, I got it from Home Goods. I have some bath bomb pieces in there. So if you're in here, you can just reach over and access any of these items very easily. So for that, I think I like it. Y'all know I'm not the decor girl, I'm the handy girl. <laughs> okay, moving on. I had to text Anthony some pictures to see what he thought he likes it. So, okay, moving on to the toilet area. Okay, we're gonna start our measurements now we know the, the height that we want for each of the shelves, but we're gonna start our um, bracket mount measurements and we're gonna base it off of the width of the top of the toilet, right? So we're gonna do them like this. So the brackets will be lined up. And I think one, it makes your job easier as the, as the installer, but two, it's a lot more pleasing to the eye when all the lines and edges and corners match up. So everywhere there's a little plus sign, that's where I'm going to plant my mounts. Okay, with all of my little pluses and everything marked off, I'm going to do a test run using this shelf and my level just to go in and line up the pluses on each side and make sure before we commit to it that it's, that it's gonna work. Okay, that top one looks like it'll work. Middle one checks out. All right, so far so good, you guys. Let's go ahead and start mounting. Okay, let's get this first one in. Before we lock it in, let's check, make sure it's level. All right, it looks good, let's commit. <laughs> all right, you guys, all three shelves are in. If you guys are curious as to what this is, this is a little access box for the shower plumbing. So that's what that is. <laughs> now I'm gonna go ahead and check the level on all three one more time just to make sure before we can say we're done with the job. It's better to catch mistakes while you got your tools out than to catch them later. So all three are precisely level so we can move on. Now I'm feeling like going to like Target or something and finding some stuff to put on these shelves because I'm so excited about the new look. I feel like I really upgraded this bathroom. It was already pretty nice but I feel like I upgraded it another notch by adding some additional surface area and storage space. So yeah, I'm pretty happy. Okay, we're all home, everybody's home. Anthony saw the bathroom, he was flipping out like, oh my God, I love this. But um, I went to Target with Ann when I picked her up from school and I got four pieces to complete these three shelves back here, okay? So let me show you guys what I got. So this first piece is a $6 basket, okay? Woven basket by Threshold. And I just really liked it because of the kind of linen fabric here and the grayish stone-ish tones. Now the best thing about it was that it was shallow, which works really well for the shelves, but it's also really deep. How often are you gonna find something shallow and deep at the same damn time? So I was really excited about that. This will help me to keep my air fresheners discreet in here, so I'm hoping to use this for that. Next, I just got this decorative canister. It has a lid. It's a kind of um, stony kind of material, which is great, and it also has really nice detail. This was giving me spa vibes all the way, and this is um, by Hearth and Hand with Magnolia, and it was only $12.99. Next, I wanted a full plant, something with very 
very small hint of flower, right? I didn't want anything like a big bouquet, but um, something with a lot of stem to it. And this is just so perfect for like that spa, or, like really delicate zen vibe. And it's got like the fake water right at the bottom. I just love how delicate it looks. And this was only $9.99 and it really, really seals the deal for me. So I got that. And then last but not least, I wanted to replace that uh, wicker basket. So I got this one. This is by Hearth and Hand with Magnolia and it was only $12.99. And I love how it has like the little leatherette handle strap sort of thing at the top there, which is like a nice little detail. It's the perfect woven aesthetic, right? And I like the color. It's not too bamboo-y. It's not too golden brown. It's just a nice subtle. And it's the woven look and all that. So yeah, I'm gonna just put the feminine products in this thing. Oh, and one more thing, a new trash bin, okay? This one I had to have, you guys. I love the look of it, but the part that really got me was the freaking lid, okay? Like, come on, this is so perfect for um, a bathroom. You don't always want what you throw away to be easily seen, but some of those like stainless steel little trash baskets that you open with your foot, they're not as cute, especially for like the vibe that I'm trying to have in here in terms of like the look. So this fit perfectly, I just really love it. And then, so it's basically a little plastic waste bin that's just kind of covered with this other stuff. So really, really love that. Love that I can just take this out. I can sanitize it, I can clean it if I need to. It's perfect. And this is by Threshold and it was only $19.99. All right, let's style these shelves. <laughs> guys it's the next day and we are right back at it today I'm going to be painting or just touching up the paint on this window trim but I actually kind of want to clean the windows a little bit first before I paint and I have all of my materials so I am ready to go so this is the paint that I picked up yesterday from Home Depot it's a bare paint it's just a white paint and it's specifically for trim so it's gonna give it like that semi gloss kind of finish so that's the kind I'm using I only got a quart because I felt like I really didn't need that much. I got my frog tape in case I need it, but honestly, you guys, I think I'm just gonna freehand this. Had a paintbrush already. This is the size that I'm gonna be using. And I got my drop cloth here just in case. So I'm thinking I'm gonna get started down here on the first floor. I'm probably gonna start in the kitchen. Um, and let me show you guys why I'm doing this. <laughs> so here's kind of a close up of the trim and what some of the problem areas are. So if you guys can tell like around here, it's still like the brown oak kind of color because that's the color that these windows and everything were at first. So they caulked it up pretty good. So that's why you see some of it, it kind of looks like it's been painted, but that's really just the caulk to just seal the window in. Also the window installers had put in this trim, but um, it's kind of raw, it's not really finished with like a white paint. So I think over time this will probably start to fade. So I'm actually going to paint over this as well. All right, let's get started. The drop cloth down. You guys, the thing about this project is that I really feel like once I start painting this trim around this window, I'm going to want to paint the trim throughout the entire house. I'm just going to start seeing things that need to be touched up and I'm going to be going on a paint frenzy. I hope that doesn't happen today because I'm not in the mood for that. Like I just want to stick to the task at hand, but I already am looking at the trim just standing here right now and I'm just like, all of this needs to be touched up. <laughs> so much for getting only a quart of paint. <laughs> yeah, the drop cloth is just for the just in case, but I doubt I'm even going to need it. I'm going to be using such a small amount of paint at a time on such a small brush. Like I don't even know, if, I don't even, think I need the frog tape. Like I'm just gonna freehand this, so. So the process is gonna be like this. I'm gonna first clean the window, then I'm going to paint it, and then I'm gonna move on. All right, let's go. I don't really want my nails to get messed up.
look who decided to keep me company. It's Sansa Girl. Hey, Sansa Girl. She was outside for a while, so she came in here with the slobber lobber. Had the floor all yucky over there. Say, I got it up. <laughs> okay, you guys, I've done uh, mostly all the windows. I just got this last one right here to do. And I am getting tired. Okay, I thought I was gonna be able to like wash the windows from the outside, but it's too hot. It's like 90 degrees, so I'm not gonna be able to do it. And I'm so disappointed because I really wanted to see sparkly windows in the end, but I gotta wait because um, I don't wanna, it's just too, it's way too hot for that. I do not wanna put these window treatments back up until I get the new ones. I'm gonna leave them down. Anthony won't let me. It's almost time for lunch. Give me Sassy Girl. Sassy Girl. So y'all, when I get done with this, I'm definitely going to grab my white caulk and caulk some of these spots. Like I noticed a little bit of missing spots. Not the installer's fault at all, just some stuff I saw that has to do with our trim. Like some of the wood pieces where they connect could use a little caulk just to fill it in a bit. Because honestly, at first I wasn't sure, but now I am pretty sure that this is the original trim for the house. The trim along the walls might not be, at least not all of it, but the windows, I think this is the original. And I think it was always painted white because originally it was probably that oak color. So yeah, some places where the wood has separated a little bit, I just wanna fill it in so you can't really notice it. But it's looking good, you guys. Like I wanna buy window treatments today. Ah, I just wish I knew what the heck I was shopping for. that I'm so glad Sansa is keeping me company okay I need to do the windows upstairs um, but I'm trying to think should I even try to do that today or should I just do that tomorrow I really want to get it all done because um, I gotta go pick up Ann shortly and I need to jump in the shower and all that before I do that so anywho I got my cock collection up here chilling in the cut I'm trying to look for the white one So this is a power grab, Loctite, all-purpose cock. I don't think this is the one that I need. So yeah, I might have to go to the store and grab a white one. Hmm. All right, that's the first coat. Now I'm gonna go pick up Ann and I'll be back for the second.
All right, all done with the painting. Finished. It's still daylight. Come here, Anne. Come here, Steve. Look, Anne. Say hi. Say hi. Hi. Yay, yeah, yay, yeah, yo. Ann loves it. So the last step is to just finish the caulking and everything. So I went ahead and picked up this DAP one from Menards. It's in the color white. And it specializes in windows, doors, molding, and trim. It's perfect for what I'm doing. <laughs> so yeah, it's in white. Um, you can put this and paint over it, but 100% waterproof, easy water cleanup, and low odor for interior or exterior. This is probably the stuff they were using when they put the windows in, to be honest. So this is what it looks like. <laughs> so, let me go get my cop gun. E -I -E -I -O. Okay, so um, Anthony is getting Ann's uh, dinner ready. It's 6 p.m., he just got in, so it's kind of going into the evening, so I want to hurry up and finish this caulking so this stuff can have overnight to just dry and set, and then tomorrow I'll be all done. I don't want to roll this over into tomorrow. So I'm gonna put this in here, cock it, and load it, and um, we should be able to do this rather quickly. Okay, so I cut the tip off on an angle because I'm just going to be like. <laughs> and what's good, Annie Boo? What's good, Ann Burger? All right, let's go. So first, let me show y'all what and why I'm doing this, okay? Let me show them why I'm doing this. Do, do, do. E-I-E-I-O. Okay, I need a window with a good example. Okay, here's a good example. All right, so here's why I'm doing this. Do you see how each of these wood components are separate, right? And in some areas, they're separated. So you see, you can like tell these are two separate pieces. You can tell that this is a separate piece from this. Um, you can tell that this is separate from this. And that, you know, all of these are separate little pieces that have been all kind of put together. And so what I'm gonna try to do is make it all look like just one big piece, right? By creating the illusion that all of this is, is all cemented together by getting rid of these cracks. And when we fill it with caulk, we get rid of the cracks because you can no longer see them. For some of you who may be watching this and you may be thinking, gee, it seems like you're doing a lot of work after paying those guys all that money to install the windows. Well, yes and no, right? Yes, this is a lot of work, but no, it was not the, ins the window installer's responsibility to do all of this. What I'm doing right now is more of like a finishing type of cosmetic work type of thing. This is something that you would hire like a painter to come in and do or like a carpenter or something like that. This is not something that a window installer would do. This is more so like adding like finishing touches on the trim, you know. Um, the trim has nothing to do with the windows. But when I get done with it, it's gonna all look like it did. It's gonna all look like one comprehensive piece, hopefully. All right, let's get started. Okay, that first round went pretty good. I'm just gonna take my finger here and just smooth over it. And in doing so, there'll be a lot of excess. Okay, completely closed in that seal. You can't even see it. Let me show y'all why this step is worth it. Now, remember what I just showed you, like all the gapping in between there? now is completely sealed together. You can't even tell that those were three separate pieces of wood because it all just looks like one piece of molding. You see that? So now I'm just gonna go in and do some detail work up here. And for some of this, I'm gonna just use my finger because it's so delicate. All right, I got the fan going. This is what it's looking like. It's really nice, you guys. No gaps, nothing peaking, everything filled in. And I'll check tomorrow to see if I need to paint this over once everything's dry. But um, I may not have to paint it again, but if I do, no problem. Smooth out some of those bumps and bruises and grooves from the older wood. Most importantly, no gaps. 
So now I'm going to do the same thing over here on this side, filling in all of that. Okay guys, a couple days have passed, but I wanna show you the finished results on the window, so here we go. So this is how everything turned out. This is the window in the dining room. I just wanted to really show you guys kind of what the big deal was with doing all this detailed work. So as you can see, everything got filled in. There are no cracks and openings and separations in the wood. When looking at this, you would not be able to tell that there were about 14 pieces involved. It just looks like one comprehensive piece, makes the window look so clean and cohesive. So that was the whole point of me filling in all of those gaps, look really clean and finished. Let me show you guys the one over here. The formal living room window. Look at those corners, looking good if I do say so myself. Let me show you guys the windows in the family room. These were the ones, really this whole first floor were the ones that I felt most adamant about fixing all the details because the wood down here was a little bit more separated than the rest of the house. So as you guys can see, it's looking really, really good. This looks like one giant piece. That's the part that I love the most. Like, honestly, it all just kind of came together really, really nicely. And then the kitchen windows here, very, very nice. And then the awning window over the kitchen sink. Okay, and let me show you guys the garage window. Okay, so this is the one that I had said at first that I wasn't gonna paint. You guys may remember that it had that wood trim kind of going around, it was unfinished, it had never been painted, it had never been even treated or anything, it was just raw trim. So I went ahead and painted a couple coats over that and then I went in with the caulk. And honestly, I probably need to give it maybe one more coat of paint because you can kind of still see through it. So I'll probably give it one more coat. And then after that, I'll be done. And it just looks so much better. Looks really, really good. And by painting this trim in here, it actually makes the window look a little larger. I don't know if you guys remember what it looked like before, but by painting the trim white, it actually extended the window because that brown trim was definitely shrinking it. All right, here's Anne's bedroom window. Turned out really, really nice. I had to do quite a bit of caulking in this one. If you guys recall from when I showed you the before, and it came together quite nicely. Seamless. That's what we were after, seamless. And I honestly love the trim. It's old school, but I really love it because it just really adds that really subtle decorative element to the windows, makes them look bigger, look, makes them look more expensive. I don't even wanna put the window treatments back on. I want new stuff now, I want all new stuff. Let me know what you think and if you felt like this was um, a project that was well worth it because I certainly do. And I'm not gonna show you guys every single window in the house because I think you can kind of get the gist. You guys don't wanna look at every single window. But let's go ahead and take a final look at the bathroom. Okay, let's see how the bathroom turned out. I turned the mirrors on. It's really bright in here because of that. But I'm so excited about this toilet area. I hope this doesn't gross you guys out looking at a toilet, but let's just look above it, okay? So this is how everything turned out, you guys. So inside the basket here, I ended up just putting some miscellaneous air fresheners, <laughs> this stuff for the toilet bowl, and some hemorrhoidal wipes, you know? So they're easily accessible. And um, there's plenty of room to grow into that too. And then in this one, like I mentioned, I just have feminine products. So those are kinda in there, a nice little variety. So it tucks away really nicely. And then just a couple of towels, I don't know. I thought these were just cute up there. They really don't serve much of a function. But I guess if you think about it, if you had like a little accident over here, at least you would have a towel at arm's reach. So I guess it is still good to have it over here. And then over here, I just made a little change. I added some black textured kind of striped pillows. I used to have three like this, if you guys remember, but I went ahead and kept the two and just added the two black ones. I actually had those downstairs, but I'm gonna revamp my living room so we don't need those down there anymore. So I thought those would be cute in here. I like black, it adds like some drama. Over here, you guys, I'm really, really excited about these robes that I ordered from RH, right? Restoration Hardware. And these are their luxury plush robes, you guys. They are super duper comfy, like it makes absolutely no sense. So I went ahead and put those 
rope hooks over here. Those were super easy to install and very cheap, so I really love that. This is what my countertop is looking like. Here is my new surface space over here with my two new shelves. I pretty much kept it how you guys saw it. I just added bath bomb, shower bomb type of things. I put those in there. I just kind of refreshed the old stuff that was in there. Guess what I decided to put in here, y'all? Soap, okay? Just basic, basic soap, but it's already unwrapped, so it's really easy to get to, and I just think that's so important. So yeah, that's it. That's the revamped storage for my master bathroom. What do you guys think? And I literally did this on one of the smallest budgets you could ever imagine. Like, I don't even know if I spent $200. Not counting the robes, but you know what I mean. All right, that's everything, you guys. I know this was kind of a lengthy video, but I really wanted to share these projects with you all in order to inspire you to maybe tackle some similar projects in your own house. But I hope you guys did enjoy and got some ideas and some motivation. And thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you in my next one. Bye.